Hey, good morning. Today we are going to discuss uh, what are we going to discuss? Uh, I look at the lecture notes. No, I didn't. I suggest you preview the lecture notes and the textbook. Okay, today we are going to discuss the transformers. Uh, last time we discussed the inductance, the magnetic coupling, and one application is to make a transformer. Uh, transformer, uh, two coils are placed close to each other. Uh, a changing flux in one coil will cause the induced voltage in the second coil. Uh, the coils are said to have a mutual inductance. Mutual inductance. Okay, L sub F, which can either add or subtract from the total inductance. Uh, the mutual, sometimes they add up together, sometimes they subtract from each other. And depending on if the field are adding, uh, adding or um, Here, this is one coil, this is one coil. If we have a current going through here, then we are going to have magnetic uh, field in here, okay? This flux, because this is close to this, and this flux may go into here, like this, uh, depends on the distance, all the material, anyway, the coupling factor. Uh, the coupling may be strong, may be weak, but anyway, there's some magnetic flux will be induced in here. Uh, depends on how the, the orientation, this one may add to the original flux or may subtract. Once we have flux here, then we are going to have induced the voltage and the current in this. So this is a, a transform. Uh, so we have the, the inductance of the first coil is L1, the inductance of the second coil is L2, and in between we have L. In between these two, we have LM. It's called mutual inductance. Uh, LM. Uh, the coefficient of a coupling is a matter of how well the coils are linked. Uh, it is number between 0 and 1. If the coefficient equals 1, that means it's complete coupling. Uh, if the coefficient equals 0, that means no coupling. Uh, usually, in practice, this coefficient will be between 0 and 1. Uh, we want this to be as close as 1 uh, as possible. How LM is calculated? Uh, we are going to calculate LM, the mutual inductance based on this uh, based on this formula. So K times square root of L1 times L2. L1 and L2 are the inductance of the first and the second coil. Uh, multiply together, then take the square root, then times the uh, coefficient of coupling K. Again, K is between 0 and 1. Uh, so that, that's it. So if we know the L1 and we know L2, if we know the coupling coefficient, then we can calculate the, the um, coupling inductance, mutual inductance. The coefficient of coupling depends on the factor such as the orientation of the coil. In this case, this orientation is, uh, is better than if you turn this one 90 degrees. So this uh, placement, this orientation has more coupling than if you turn this one like this, right? So nice here, so here, this coupling will be smaller than parallel. And also depends on uh, their proximity. Uh, if they are close, the coupling is large. If they are far away, uh, the coupling is small. And also, if they are in a uh, common core, uh, common core means uh, we have something that uh, connected these two together. You are a variety of material. Uh, if they have the common core, then the coupling will be large. If they don't, then the coupling will be small. And uh, the right hand side is a practical small power transformer. You may already have seen this before, right? Anyone seen this before? Right? Yes, okay, that's good. Uh, I believe you have an electric charge, uh, you have a charger, right? You have a cell phone, you have a charger, this one. Even you cannot see this directly, every charger is supposed to have something 
<laughs> like this. Right? A really big one. That yeah, big one. Uh, I was a old telephone, I think, uh, box. Okay. And like turn it. The older you are, the bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was like this big. Yeah. <laughs> uh, nowadays, it tend to be as small as possible, as light as possible, as a high efficiency. Also, uh, this is a very typical. This is a very old one. Right? Uh, and the the symbol for schematic symbols we have uh, these three types and uh, for if you do homework or to test uh, usually you just do the first one and that's easier and uh, if you want to emphasize that uh, there's a core a core beside uh, inside then you can do the second one or the third one based on different material Uh, if you look at this, we have two coils. The first one, on the left hand side, we call primary. And the second one, on the right hand side, we call this uh, uh, secondary. Uh, so here, this is uh, maybe, uh, depends, this is maybe primary, this is secondary. Actually, when you use this one, you can switch. Right? This one also, you can use this one as input, this one as output, but the URL, it is a label. So we are going to use it as a, a based on the label. Suppose this one is a primary, this is a second. And uh, there are some numbers. Uh, for example, the number of uh, the turns of the coil. Uh, the first one is called uh, A primary. Uh, look at the, on the denominator. That is the number of turns uh, on the primary coil on the first one. And the number of coils on the secondary is on the top. And this ratio is called uh, the term ratio uh, is defined by the secondary number divided by the primary number. Uh, but as far as I remember, it uh, looks like it's opposite. So in my head, it's opposite. I don't know why this is like this. Uh, but you follow this uh, textbook. Uh, most transformers are not marked with the term ratios. Uh, however, it is very useful uh, for understanding the transformer operation. Uh, we are going to, if we talking, if we are talking about transformer, you need to know this uh, this ratio. Example: a transformer has 800 turns on the primary, and the turn ratio is uh, a quarter. How many turns are on the secondary? The definition of the turn ratio is the uh, number of the secondary divided by the number of the primary. 200. So it's 200, right? That's easy, right? So for uh, something over 800 equals a quarter. So that's something uh, equals 200. 200, yes. All right. If you look at this, uh, this practical transform, right? There's somewhere on the terminals, they will be marked with a polarity, like this, here. On the first line, it's marked, this, that's dot here, that's dot here. That means uh, these two terminals, this terminal and this terminal, have the same polarity. That means if this one is positive, then this one is positive. If this one is negative, then this one is negative. They are the same face. Right? If you we can see this is a, a AC voltage or current form, and this one goes up, then this one also goes up. This one goes down, and this one goes down at the same time. So they are in. They, we call this in phase. Huh? They follow the same uh, response. And this one, this is uh, marked. This is marked. That means this point and this point. These two terminals are in phase. In another word, this one and this one are out of phase, means they are 180 degrees out of phase. Okay. In another word, if this go up, then this one will go up, opposite. And this one go down here, and this one will go up. Okay. Uh, so when you use this uh, uh, transformers, you need to look at the mark. Um, depend on what you want. You want uh, the same phase, or you want the out of phase voltage, then you can connect. Uh, I'll call you. Okay, any questions on this? Uh, this one is the in phase connection, and this one is the out of phase connection. Out of phase means the 
the phase difference is 180 degrees. Right? From trigonometry, everybody has trigonometry, right? Uh, cosine 180 degrees means e equals negative 1. Uh, cosine 0 means e equals, zero, uh, e equals positive 1. So 1 is positive 1, 1 is negative 1, so this yeah. <coughs> is true. Uh, next, we discuss several types of uh, transforms. Right? The first one is called step up, and the second one is called step down. Step up transform means the voltage on the secondary is uh, higher than the voltage on the primary. Uh, that means the turn ratio n is greater than 1. For example, it was 2, it was 10, it was 100. In the step down, it's all this. The voltage on the secondary is lower than the primary. So it's a step down. And this ratio n will be less than 1. Like this, what is the second voltage? So here, look at this. Huh? Uh, that is what I learned uh, when I was a student. So this is, I, see, I will see this term equals 4 to 1. Uh, but in this textbook, this, uh, this is uh, 1 to 4. So n equals a 4 to 1. But anyway, you can see this number of terms here, uh, uh, divided by the number of terms here is a 4 to 1. That means for every one term here, this one has a 4 term. Does it make sense? So yeah, for this, Textbook, or in this class, we said the turn ratio equals a quarter. Right? Now, the prime voltage equals 120 RMS value. What we are looking for is what is the secondary voltage. Right? We can see this. The, the, more, uh, the, the more turns, the larger the voltage, so the proportion. So the first one, you get this one equals 120. So that was 30. That's where it will be 30, right? Because the ratio equals uh, 4 to 1. So you just, uh, the voltage here equals uh, the voltage here times the term. The term, again, based on my knowledge, it's 4 to 1, but you see <coughs> 1 to 4, okay? So that's uh, 120 times a quarter equals 30. Is this step up or step down? This is a step down, right? Yes. From 120 down to the 30. So this sure. is 30. And uh, what is the turn ratio? For step down means the ratio must be less than 1. So yeah. what is the ratio? 1 over 4, four. Huh? which is a 4. Okay? 1 to 1. Uh, some, for example, uh, your, in your uh, neighborhood, resident, you may have some like this. Uh, you may be able to see some big transports. Anyone? Yeah, oh, Where are they? Right? A power plant or something <coughs> around your neighborhood. Uh, what kind of transformer are those? You guess. Step down. Step down or step up? Step down. Step down, step down right? Because the incoming voltage usually is like, at least at that point is 4,000 or something. It's very high. Right? And uh, what we What's the power, what is the voltage we need at your home? 120. So 120, so we need step down, right? When are you going to use a step up? Microwave. Microwave, yes, microwave. Uh, microwave, uh, the input primary is 120, right? But inside, when we drive with the microwave tube, we need like uh, maybe several tens of thousand, right? So that, at least higher than this one, so that is a step up. Anyway, else, for example, power transmission. In the power generation plant, they, they generate, uh, use the electric generator. The voltage usually generated is like 120 or something. So several hundred. Then, before they transmit, they need to boost the voltage to very high, step by step. And for example, if you between large cities, those transmission lines, the voltage may be more than 100,000. So they need a big transformer, step up transformer to post the voltage. Right? Uh, you may ask, why do you want to do this? Why do you just transmit directly 120 to your home? And in that case, you're going to have a lot of power losses. Right? The higher the voltage, the smaller the losses. And we are going to discuss a lot of details in BET 461, electric power generation, transmission, and distribution. 
Uh, so we have a step up and step down. Another uh, special top, uh, special transform is isolation. Isolation transform. Look at this. And what is the ratio? Turn ratio. One to one. That means the ratio equals one. That means the secondary voltage equals uh, the prime voltage. Right? So this is 120 and this one is 120. So what's the point to use this? Won't step up, won't step down. What's the point? Right? The purpose is for isolation. You can see this. These two are not connected directly. And they are separate. So this is a closed loop. This one is a closed loop. Right? For example, if we know we have only AC can be coupled from this coil to this coil. For DC, if you put the battery here, this one can only form a loop in, in the primary circuit. Cannot be coupled to the second. So this one, uh, we have to sec uh, separate the primary and the second. So this is called isolation uh, transport. The isolation transformer breaks the DC path uh, between two circuits while maintaining the AC path. And the DC is blocked by the transformer because magnetic flux does not change with DC. Uh, coupling transformer. That's the next one. The coupling transformer are used to pass a high frequency signals from one state to another. Uh, usually, the higher the frequency, the better the coupling. For very low frequency, for the DC, there's no coupling at all. Right? That's why you cannot directly charge, wirelessly charge your, battery, your, your cell phone with a DC source. You have battery here. Right? Your phone is here. Right? You put this to very, even very close. Do not touch. You cannot charge this. Right? But uh, anyone knows the wireless charging. Whose cell phone has wireless charging? Right? How do you charge your cell phone? You put it somewhere, right? They do not have, it looks like they do not have a direct connection. They do not have wire connected. How does that happen? Right? They have something like a transformer, and not necessarily like this, but they are going to have a magnetic coupling. Right? Um, and sometimes they want to have the coupling as, more efficient, as efficient as possible, and they are going to boost the frequency. And the higher the frequency, the better the coupling. And uh, this one is a coupling transformer. Uh, okay, uh, appli one application is uh, plotted here. We can see the first stage uh, is an amplifier stage. Amplifier. <coughs> and those amplifier at your home. You have a movie system, right? Here. And you want uh, the speaker, uh, loud speaker. So that has an uh, amplifier, right? Yeah. So that uh, amplifier, usually, uh, only we want them to amplify only DC, the, the music. Do not want ampl uh, amplify the DC. So if you have DC shift from the first stage, uh, from the first stage, you do not, we do not want to this couple or directly connected to the second stage. Because if you have AC DC here, if you remove this, directly connect this, this DC also will be the, at the input of this one. Then this one may have some trouble. Right? Later time in, uh, when, we when we learn to design amplifiers, linear amplifiers, we are going to do this. Usually we can, for small signals, we can put a capacitor in between to cut off the DC. We know the capacitor cannot pass DC, right? And in this case, maybe for large power, we can use a transformer. Um, so AC here, DC here, together, and pass through the transformer, and DC will be blocked. And only AC can pass through to the next AC. Okay, any questions on that? Do you have any examples or see anything? You want comments? Uh, we, this is a Fundamental electronics, we would like to you connect your daily life with this one. If you see anything electronics that can be related to our topics, and that will be good.
any thing? Okay, so does that have anything to do with, uh, <coughs> like you see them on display, and it's got like little lightning bolts sticking out, it's like a globe. Uh -huh. What is that thing called? Anybody know? It's like the little globe that's got the little lightning bolts oh, yeah, yeah, where you can touch it and it lights yeah, yeah. up. Plasma. Plasma? It's a plasma ball. Plasma, yeah. Plasma. Yeah, plasma ball. Does that have anything to do with it? Plasma. Yeah, uh, because I mean, it's changing it from. It creates static electricity in a glass ball. Yeah. Plasma is uh, the electrifier, the air. Yes, um, the air will be breaking into positive and <coughs> negative. The air is, is neutral, right? <laughs> and uh, with a higher voltage, it will break into uh, just like the fluorescent light. Right? So if you apply very high voltage, that means you use a transformer right? to boost this voltage to very high, then it will break the, uh, the air and into positive and negative. So this uh, uh, ions and electrons can flow, so can have a current. Yeah. I believe that is not uh, like a uh, transformer, okay. uh, not like this. Yeah, I was just wondering because I mean the little bolts are like going through the air and if you touch it on the outside, it'll suddenly get really hot. And I didn't know if that was maybe something to do with the whole wireless charging stuff, just like at a smaller level. We would like you to bring uh, any, uh, this kind of examples to give a discussion. Please do. Okay, next one. Uh, what we did, uh, discussed so far is the voltage. Step up means uh, the secondary voltage is higher than the primary. And step down means uh, the voltage on the secondary is uh, lower than the primary. And how about the current? Right? The current is the opposite. For step up, when we say step up and step down, we always refer to the voltage. Right? Don't say this is the current. We always need to see the voltage. So in the start, step up uh, transformer, step up. Right? The current on the secondary will be smaller than the primary. Although it's a step up. Step up means voltage, but the current is opposite. Uh, the reason is because this transformer is a passive device. That means it cannot give you extra energy. Right? For transformer, if you have some like of energy or power in the primary, at the most, at the best, you get the same thing as the secondary. Uh, you, you have a loss, for example, heat in between. So you have less than, for example, 90% or something. Definitely you cannot get more than what you input to the primer. So the power equals, uh, how to calculate the power? P equals uh, voltage times uh, current, right? Mm -hmm. So in the step up, if your voltage is higher, then your current must be lower yeah. than the primer. So that's why it's opposite, uh, to keep the power the same. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and they use a different term. Uh, this is the ratio is what I'm talking about before. Okay. I learned this one, so N equals, uh, uh, no, this is the same thing. So it is the primary current divided by the secondary current. Uh, this N is still the uh, term ratio. Notice that primary on the top and the uh, uh, secondary on the bottom. The power, as we said, the transformer cannot step up, cannot boost the power, and cannot increase the power, theoretically or ideally cannot decrease the power. Uh, so the primary power equals uh, the secondary power. So primary power equals secondary power, then V prime times uh, IP, equals uh, Vs, you can just use S, right? So that's simple. Vs times Is. Uh, that means the Vs over Vp will be equals uh, Ip over Is. Right, so this is the, the ratio is opposite. If you do the pro uh, cross product, Vs times Is equals uh, Vp times uh, Ip. So that's P, uh, power on the primary equals power on the second. Okay, any questions on this? Uh, this is pretty simple, right? Speed <coughs> right. uh, We are going to discuss uh, another type of uh, transformer. 
Uh, nowadays, you may not know that, but uh, I still want to ask. When you buy the new TV set, eh? when you open the box, there's somewhere here, there's a small device, it's like, as large as like this, eh? and uh, it is a circular thing, and with some wires, eh? some coils on both sides, it is a circle. Eh? Like this circle here, and there's some wires here, this some wires here. What is this? What we are talking about? Transformer. Uh, transformer, right? Uh, transformer, why do you want that small transformer? But usually you just throw it, you don't need that. Uh, the reason is uh, you use the cable instead of your antenna. Who uses antenna at home? Everybody uses cable for TV, right? Uh, if you use antenna, you have your antenna on your home, on your roof, uh, you need to connect that antenna to your TV. But uh, sometimes the impedance will not the same. That means we have a mismatch in yes, impedance. Uh, in that way, four ohms. Okay, okay, you know that, right? The ratio equals uh, two to one, right? Uh, two to one. Then we are going to little bit we are going to learn. This is four to one. Uh, if we have a mismatch in impedance, what you see on the screen is uh, you are going to have a ghost image. Anyone knows that? I'm talking about plasma, like when it burns the screen. Uh, no, not that. The burn screen is still only one image. Because the image means uh, you have one face here, then you have another one, a little bit later, then another one later. So you're talking about like a refresh, when the refresh rate's not... Uh, no, refresh rate is the in, the in the same place. The delay, this one, delay of the pixels going on right? No, that's, that's not. The pixels, yeah, more, more pixels are the same image, just kind of shifted over the time. Yeah. What are you talking about? That happens when the pixel goes to a different concept. Yeah. yeah. And what is he? So you have one picture here, then you have a... Uh, uh, it's not a, a dark one here, then a dark one here, it's like this. Oh, it would be like shaded. Yeah, like shaded. Like so you can yeah, see, yeah, yeah. there are a lot of faces mm -hmm. of the same person, oh, but... Uh, imagine the flash room. Oh, I understand. I like it. It's like, yeah, like an it's old window system when it, yeah. uh, like, have the same window like 20 million times yeah. because it didn't get... Yeah, so it's uh, lighter and uh, lighter and lighter like this, right? The reason is because the first one mm -hmm. is the signal received directly from the antenna. Because you have a mismatch in the impedance, then this signal will be reflected back a little bit, then reflected from the antenna back again, then we have time delay here, right? That's why you see, okay, one is here, then another one is later, so here. But the signals will be a little bit weaker, so let's see, it's not as clear as the first one. Then the second one also reflects back and forth, then you have a lot. So then, if you see something like this, you at once, you know what happens. That means the impedance are not matched. So that is why. Not why is when you make a call with your computer, sometimes you hear yourself or some, hear some echoes. Yeah. What's the reason? The reason is again, mm -hmm. no matter your Mac or your speaker or something, the impedance, maybe the connection is not good, so you, the, it's not perfect connection. So you are going to have a reflection back and forth so you hear that. Right? So anyway, those are uh, impedance mismatch. The transformer can change this. Right? And this is called uh, uh, reflecting uh, impedance we are change the impedance of the load. Uh, for example, if your antenna has uh, the impedance equals 300, if your TV input the impedance typically equals 75, 75, se uh, 75, 300. So it's not going to match. What we do is we put uh, this kind of transformer in between, and the turn ratio will be two to one, not four to one, two to one. And then, looking from one side, the 75 will be 300. Mm -hmm. Or looking from the other side, the 300 will be 75. So in this way, no matter from both sides, <coughs> they are matched. Right? So that is the uh, reflection, reflected resistance. Okay, so how to derive this, uh, I said, 2 to 1, 4 to 1, this ratio, look at this. From Ohm's law, the Resistance looking from the primary equals the voltage of the primary divided by the current on the ground. Right. And the load resistance on the secondary equals the voltage on the secondary divided by the current on the second. So we do that from Ohm's law, right? Okay, now let's see. 
uh, we divide these two equations and uh, divide this. So this R P divided by R L will be equal to this one divided by this. Uh, then you do something, okay, equals to 1 over n squared. Uh, so that's why, as we mentioned, the ratio of that little device is 2 to 1. Then 2 to 1, you square, that is a 4 to 1. Uh, 4 to 1, then 75 times 4 will be equal to 300. Or 300 divided by 4 will be equal to 75. So from both ways, there are impedance matched. Right? If you use cable, you don't use this one. If you use this one, it makes things worse, right? So if you use antennas, then you, you need to use this one. And also depends what is your antenna output impedance. So you, we need to know what we are doing. Huh? These are the theories. We use the theories to uh, guide our practice. So the resistance looking from the primary will be equal to uh, the ratio squared times uh, the load impedance. Okay. If the load impedance equals 75, then times the 2 squared times 4 equals uh, 300. So that will be matched. If you look into the primary side of the circuit, you can see an effective load that is changed by the reciprocal of the turn, turn ratio squared. Okay. Like this. The real load equals RL, and uh, the load resistance we are looking from the prime will be will be changed uh, with the uh, ratio square. The next one, uh, the impedance matching, the word impedance. Before we discuss the resistance, everybody knows that, right? Very fortunate with the resistance. We can calculate the resistance of a series circuit, parallel circuit, combination circuit. But we didn't discuss a lot of reactance for capacitors and for inductance. We only discussed the capacitance, capacitance and the inductance. But we didn't discuss the reactance. Uh, we mentioned briefly last time for inductors, the reactance equals omega times L. For capacitors, that equals 1 over omega times C. But we don't discuss. But all this reactance combined with the resistance is called an impedance. Uh, so they will have a real part and an imaginary part. So that's complex now. Complex, and we don't discuss it in this part. We are going to discuss it in AC or EET line 11. Uh, so we have this circuit, and the, the load resistance equals uh, RL. The, uh, the internal resistance equals R, and we have this uh, impedance matching transformer to try to make uh, this resistance in real life, this one and this one are not equal. But what we want is, uh, we want to make this one looks to this side equal to this one. Remember, when we can get the maximum power transmitted to the load. Still remember that? If we have a, a source, the source has an internal resistance, and we connect this source to a load, when the load can take the maximum power, when that is, when, the resistance is equal when the these two resistance are equal, equal, right? When the load resistance equals internal resistance. So that's why we want this impedance matched. Uh, so we want this one and this one to be equal. But in real life, this one, these are not equal. But we want this one to be equal to this when we look from this side. So that is called reflected resistance. So this one reflected to here must be equal to this. Uh, so if you want to design the transformer, if you know this, for example, this one equals 300, if this one equals 75, then you want to design the turn ratio equals 2, this one reflected to here will be equals 300. Okay. Or if you look from this side, this 300 reflected to the secondary side and will be equal to 75. 300 divided by 4 equals 75. But, so both ways, look at here, this 300 will be equal to 75. Or you look at this side, this 75 will be equal to 300. So match on both sides. Right?
uh, impedance matching transformers are designed for a wider range of frequencies than power transformers, hence tends to be not ideal. Right? So impedance matching is not ideal. Not ideal means uh, the input power will be larger than the output power. Mm -hmm. uh, the power on the output on the secondary will be smaller than the primary. There are some power losses uh, in the in the transformer. The next time is called uh, blend is a special balance and balance. Right? And uh, again, coaxial cable. Anyone knows coaxial cable? Yes. Oh yeah. It's usually it's white, right? Some are black. White on the plastic in outside the inside there's a there's a copper steel wire and in between there's some like that screen isolating, right? So this one you connect it to a TV directly yeah. from the from the from the wall. Yeah. So that's the coaxial cable, right? And those frequency uh, sorry this uh, resistance usually not equal to first frequency usually equals fifty or something. Uh, but some TVs for example equals three hundred then you need to use this uh, uh, impedance measure. Uh, the signal on this uh, coaxial cable is not balanced, it's unbalanced. Unbalanced means uh, the signal look like this is compared to the ground. So this here and this one is the ground. So the signal only in the center wire and the outside is will be ground. So this is unbalanced. And balance the input, balance the signal look like this. One is positive, another one is, one is like this, another one is 180 degrees out of phase with this one. Yeah. They have the same amplitude, but they are opposite. Uh, like this transformer, this is balanced the side, and we are going to have signals like this and this is this, balanced. And this one is not balanced. Uh, we cannot directly connect this cable here to your cable here because this side is balanced, this side is unbalanced. What we do is we are going to use this uh, balance, unbalanced transformer to connect like this. Uh, also, like this, if you have a, a dipole antenna on top, that is the balanced antenna, and the coaxial cable it's unbalanced. So when you connect this, you need to use a, a little transport right, to <coughs> feed the signal from a balanced antenna to the unbalanced cable. Uh, and also, the, the impedance of the coaxial cable is mostly 75 or some are 50. I think 50 is more, more than one. Right? And the Dipole antenna right, will be like um, some are 73, some are 50, okay, double, that will be 300. So 75 times 4, so, uh, 300. In this case, you also need to use a transform uh, to balance the impedance. And also change the signal from uh, balanced to unbalanced. Okay, that is. Uh, pretty much what we are going to discuss in, in this chapter. Right? So very simple, brief introductions. And we do not do a lot of calculations. You only need to know the ratio and the relationship between the voltage, the relationship between the current, and the relationship between the power, right? and different types of uh, transform. Okay, now let's review some uh, concept. The first one, mutual inductance, what is this? If you have a coil, you have inductance, right? Yeah. You have another coil, you have another. Right? If these two coils put together, right, close, mm -hmm. no matter how close, how far, okay, there will be some uh, mutual inductance. Right? <laughs> because if one flux, if flux chain in one coil, most likely the flux in another one will also chain because of the coupling. So this gives us uh, like uh, mutual inductance. How to calculate the mutual inductance? K for example, okay, yes, K times 
square root of square root of L1 times L2. Right? The inductance here is L1, inductance here is L2, L1 times L2, then take the square root, then times a K. What is K? K is the coefficient of coupling. Okay, is the coefficient of coupling. The range is uh, as large as, uh, as small as, uh, small as zero. the smallest is zero, that means no coupling, far away, right? thousand miles away. Right? And uh, if equals one, that means uh, it's a perfect coupling. Yeah, perfect. Every yeah. flux will yeah. pass through the, uh, will be coupled to the same. Okay, good. Uh, most probably in yeah, uh, practice, it will be some number between zero. Uh, transform. What is transform? Two coils. Two coils uh, put together. Yeah. Okay, uh, the working principle is because of the magnetic couple, right? Yeah. So you, you have a power or current or voltage on one, then we are going to have an induced voltage or current on the second one. Yeah. So, that, so the first one is called primary, and the next part is called the secondary. Um, primary winding and secondary winding, that's right? so the number of turns. Number, yeah, number of turns. Right? Uh, what is the turns ratio? Which one divided by which one? The second one, divided by the, the prime. Okay, good. Sure. Uh, magnetic coupling. What is this? It's no electrical connection. Just no direct connection. Yeah. Uh, the flux, magnetic flux, coupled yes. through the free air or yeah. vacuum, uh, and we can calculate all this coupling effect from a uh, what law? That is from our last, last, last oh, chapter. Ohm's law. Not Ohm's law. Ohm's law cannot call. Prefer <laughs> this uh, induction law, right? Yeah. So induction. So if uh, there's no fair this induction law, all these transformers is nothing. We cannot do this. And we cannot. Uh, we don't need to discuss this. Uh, turns ratio. We know that the secondary divided by the first, uh, the primary. Reflected resistance. What concept is this? Because the resistance seen on the primary side. Um, Use the old word, just, uh, uh, just explain. Um, what is that equal? Is, um, is that send the signal, then signal be sent back? Because okay. Something that That's a mismatch, right? Okay, that is an application. So what is what is reflected uh, resistance? What does that mean? That means you have resistance here, yeah. but on the secondary side. Yeah. But I want to look this uh, impedance from on the primary side. Yeah. So it looks like this, I reflected uh, yeah. uh, like the mirror. I reflected on uh, this side, the value will be changed. Yeah. Right? Based on the, so how to change that? Times the turn square, right? Turn ratio square. And this can be reflected uh, from prime to the secondary, from a secondary prime. Not just like a mirror. Eh? Your face, your real face, your, your image, this a big back and forth. Eh? Uh, impedance matching. What does that mean? Why we want impedance matching? How to do this? First of all, what is impedance matching? You just want to make th uh, these two impedance equal, right? Yeah, yeah. So that's the impedance matching. Why do you want that? Maximum power. For example, maximum power trans yeah. transfer, right? Yeah. The maximum power from the source uh, from the source will be transferred to the load. Okay, so this. Then how to do this? Turn. Suppose I give you uh, the load the impedance not equal to the internal impedance of the source. How I ask you to do the impedance matching? How are we going to do this? What, what do you use? One word. You use a transformer, right? Transformer, right? Yes? You use transformer. Right? Transformer can be used for this. And uh, based on different uh, the numbers of the resistance, uh, for example, minus 300 and another is 75. This is a very typical example. Then you know the ratio equals 4, right? Yeah. Then you need to take the square root of this, which equals 2. Then you are going to design or choose this transformer. The ratio must be 1 to 2. 
or it depends on which side yeah. you use, right? So you can use this way or this way. Uh, okay. All right, now we do some more exercise. First one. The measurement unit for the coefficient of coupling is? The mission. The mission. The mission is, okay, it's just the ratio, right? Yeah. The number of turns over the number of turns equals the no unit. Next one. Step up transformer referred to one, to a. one in which a. 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 the voltage a. in the second is higher than the prime. The current in the second is higher than the prime. The power to the load means in the second is higher than the prime. Or about which one? A. A, a. right? So B is a, we are only refer to car voltage, not current. Current is opposite. And uh, how about the C? That's just wrong. That's wrong. Yeah, just wrong. How am I going to change? It's you lower. can't make more power. That's wrong. Okay, so okay. ideally they will be equal. equal. In practice, it will be to the load will be smaller than than the prime. Okay, good. Uh, oscillation transformer. Blocks both AC and DC. Blocks AC plus DC, but not AC. You don't need that direct current interference. Okay, we we choose C, right? Blocks DC and the AC can be coupled every time. Go back to Edison. Why? Because of Faraday's the induction law, and the induced voltage is proportional to the change of blocks. The DC cannot change that, right? Okay, next one. If the current in the secondary is higher than the prime, the transformer is uh, AC. No, no, no. It's step, step down. down. Step down. Step down or step up? Step, step down. down. Okay, step down. 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 Step up, step down. C. If the secondary current is higher, step down, right? It's a current in the secondary is higher. That means the voltage is smaller. Yes, step down. Okay? Make sense? The current in the secondary is higher, that means the voltage on the secondary is lower, so that's a step down. Right? That's easy, don't make a mistake. Right? If you so check the point for this, and you are going to regret. Uh, step up, uh, oscillation. Uh, step down, uh, no, not enough information to tell. Uh, ideal transformer has no winding resistance, no eddy current. Power out equals power in. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Uh, explain a little bit. What's eddy? Okay. The Winding resistance, the coil, right? Primary, secondary, because they are wire, so we know they have a resistance. If you have a current passing through it from a watts low, the, the power dissipated here or as the heat will be equal to current squared times R. So there, your transformer will feel hot, right? So that will be dissipated uh, energy, so visited. So yeah. that is, uh, if there's a winding resistance, we want that resistance to be as small as possible. Uh, ideally, we want them to be zero. Mm -hmm. That means uh, after even a long time, the transformer is still as cold as beginning. So no heat at all. But uh, you may know, in real life, there's no way for this one. Yeah. So no way you resist, that is ideal. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, that is one. Second one, we know this coil, this coil, there's something linked these two, it's called the Variety of materials called the core, right? C O R E, core that. And inside, because of the magnetic flux will change up or down, channel oscillating. So we are going to have something that heat generated inside. And we are going to have current generated inside. And that current will generate heat. Okay, that is called the eddy current. Okay. Again, if we have eddy current, that means that ferrite material will be hot. Huh? It's not ideal. So for ideal transformer, there's no eddy current. That is correct. All of you above. Eh? If uh, no heat on the windings, no heat in the 
in the center, then the input power will be equal to the output power. So the answer is right? all of them are ID. Does that make sense? OK, now let's take, uh, talk about any current. This is very useful. Anyone knows any application of this any current? Do you how are you how do you cook food at home? Oh my god, uh, Okay, you know that. Okay, induction oven, right? So what does that mean? Anyone knows the details? Induction oven. It uses the coils to create heat. Right. There's a you have the input here. There's a coil, you are, for example, on the bottom, right? Yeah. You put it here. Then on the top, you have something like a glass or something, right? Okay. So any materials, right? And you put your your part on the on the top, right? And if you input, you turn on the power, there will be induce the current right, on the coil, and there will be flux, and that flux will be coupled to your induction arm, yeah. to the arm, and there will be eddy current in the in the oven. Yeah. Eh? So that also the food or the, the liquid inside that one. So that one will be heated very quickly. Eh? But if you touch the separation in between, that's supposed to be cold. Except if your your part is too hot then that is called a, like something that heat from there, not from the current. Does it make sense? Yeah. Okay, so we, we do have a, in the uh, any current inside that. So that is one example at cook, right? Industrial applications. Anyone knows anything like this? We have a lot of scrap of metals, right? And we want to make it a big one to melt it into one. How are we going to do that? Big induction. Right? Induction. I, I forget the name. Anyways, something induction. Thing. What do we do is, for example, you have the cup, huh? to drink, right? Yeah. So the, the porcelain thing, like this. You put your scrap metal inside, and you put some oil, uh, coil outside, and you connect to, the, to this one. Yeah. Or you don't do this at once, <laughs> okay? If you want to do this, you need to think, do some calculations first, right? I'll just tell you the principle. And you connect the coils directly to the, to the wall, then inside, there will be any current in the scrap metal. Right? And that is a very, because that is, looks like a transform. The problem has a lot of turns outside the, your, the, the cup. And inside, it is only one, it's a, it's a square, uh, metal square. So that is only one turn. Like. So that one will be the current. The voltage, this is, will be stepped down, right? Because outside, there are a lot of turns. Inside, there's only one turn. So the primary is the outside. The secondary is the inside, so that is the step down. Step down means uh, the inside, the current will be very large than outside because the voltage is small. So inside, the eddy current will be very, very, very large. Uh, sometimes like more one thousand times larger. Okay, that current actually is something like a short current will melt your met square method very quickly. So after some time, everything is like liquid inside. Mm -hmm. So that is very useful in the industry. Okay? So this is the eddy current. Okay, any other questions on this? Uh, you may have some other examples. Right? Next one, assume a step down transform is used between source and load. From the primary side, the load resistance will appear to be a smaller step down transform. That means the number of turns on the on the primary will be larger than. So we have, for example, several turns here, and we have less number of turns on the primary. Now, looking from the primary, this load resistance wow. will be smaller or larger? Larger, right? Wow. N squared times larger. Oh, true. Right? So now you know how to connect your small device for the for your TV, right? Because suppose your TV needs 300, but that antenna suppose equals 75. You are going to 
the, the number of turns is two to one. So you you want uh, to connect the two to the three hundred or to the seventy five? To the three hundred, right? Two to the three hundred, two squared equals four. So that seventy five will be multiplied by four equals three hundred. So it looks like the same. Yeah. Uh, transformer that can deliver more power to the load that it receives from the source is an. What kind of transformer is this? That's a non real thing. Uh, that's not the real thing, right? The, because this is a passive device, mm -hmm. right? the power can only be smaller at the output, or at most, ideally, yeah. equal. So the answer is D. Next one, generally, the purpose of an uh, impedance matching transform is to make the load voltage appear to, this, uh, to be the same Make the load resistance appear to be the same as the source resistance. Make the load current appear to be the same. Provide more power to the load than is delivered from the source. Which one? B. B. Power. You said power means P. Which one? B, right? We make the resistance. Uh, we mentioned several times, 300 eh, equals 75. 75 equals uh, 300. We only talk about the resistance must be matched. And look at the D. Provide more power to the load that is delivered from the source. This is impossible, right? No matter what kind of transformer you use, you cannot do that. The power in the output can only be smaller or at most equal to the power in the input. Yes. Uh, now, n type of transformer that tends to not be ideal because it is designed for a good frequency response is. I'm not sure you still yeah, remember this. Which one? <laughs> C, by solution. I believe it is D. Yeah, I, I don't blame you, you cannot, because this is. We just mentioned it. Yeah, so I believe somewhere in the front, it uh, must be said. This one here, right? Mm -hmm. On the left hand side, right? Bottom side. Impedance matching transformers are not ideal. Okay, this one. So the answer is D. Last one. Transformer that could be used for. Okay, we didn't discuss this. It's very easy. You, read, uh, you can read the textbook. Uh, multiple winding, yes, yeah, so the primary has, for example, one, the secondary can have several. Right? Uh, for example, in your computer, the input is, uh, is, is just this one, and you use the transform. But in, inside, some device need 5 volts, some need 12 volts, some, I don't know, 3.3 volts. Huh? 3.3, okay? So all these uh, uh, DC voltage are obtained from a rectifier, after the transform. So you can use, uh, there are a lot of designs, different designs, but one easier design is uh, you use different windings. Right? So for example here, this is the primary here, then on the secondary, you have one here, okay, the output equals 12, and this one, another one, okay, give you to five or something like this. So they have multiple um, winding type. So that is, can be 110 and 100, uh, 210. Now can be anything. Because you just put another coil. Does that make sense? Uh, center tap type. Uh, that means like this. If you have a primary here, and the secondary is here, but you have a, a center tap from the middle. So this, I think this one is also possible. If this one equals 110, this one equals 110, then if you output from the top and the bottom, that gives us 220. So I believe. Uh, C is also workable, right? Uh, isolation type, there's no, no off the bow. So, because of C, so I believe, I don't know, A and B, right? Maybe A. I, I think B is also, also good. Uh, the answer is which one? Which one you guess? A. Okay, A is good, right? Okay, I think that's it for today. Thank you.